I have many, many, many Ford parts all over the place for this engine. Uh, I kind of scattered them around to get an idea of where I'm at. So I have some upper end components there. I have the cylinder heads over here. Some random external stuff in the box yet. I'm not too worried about that. I also have the valve covers and an oil pump and an oil pump gear over there and some coils over there. Uh, first thing I think I'm going to tackle is going to be getting the cylinder heads in place because they do not have the camshafts on them. And since they do not have the camshafts on them, I do not have to worry about the valves being open and interfering with the pistons. So I'll still be able to freely turn the motor to get everything set up the way I need. There's an obvious timing mark on this main tank. Crank sprocket. So I don't have to worry about that. And then the cam sprockets. Yeah, they also have marks on them as well. So I don't have to worry about either one. So I should be safe to just go ahead and throw the cylinder heads on here. I don't have to find top dead center on the crank, things like that. I should be good. Uh, I'm going to do that. And then I'm going to start working on the oil pump because the oil pump is getting a drive gear upgrade. And I might actually make a separate video if you guys see it, a small video for just the oil pump drive gear. Because I know some people are going to be curious about what that upgrade is and why for the people upgrading these engines. Last time I was on video for this engine, I was dealing with the oil squirters. The oil squirters on this thing, I have to remove them it turns out. They are interfering with the pistons and there's no position I can put them in where they don't interfere with the pistons. There's actually a block off kit. I'll go ahead and throw a link in the description below for the block off kit that can block off those oil passages. Because the pistons are coated on the bottom, it's not really going to help to cool the bottom of the piston very much. And besides that, they're a forged piston, so they're better than the factory piston. Anyway, so I'm going to go ahead and eliminate those oil squirters. But uh, in the meantime, let's get this motor together and go from there, I guess. Start working on one thing at a time. Okay, we have the pump upgraded. I'm going to go ahead and throw this guy on here. All I have to do is line up these flat spots with the flat spots on the, the pump gear in here. That won't be a big deal. And then there's no gaskets. It's just a sit on there kind of a thing. So I'll thread these guys on. And of course this gear is gonna sit right on, yeah, like a soap. So I'm gonna go ahead and get started with all the timing components. So I'm gonna go ahead and throw an image of this piece of paper up on the screen. It is a very interesting torque procedure for this thing. We have Four bolts total, and it looks like every bolt has its own separate torque for this thing. So, I'm going to go ahead and thread these down, and while I torque these, talk about a few things, and continue the assembly on the timing components as well. So we have, obviously, the four bolts, right? We're going to start with stage 1A, which is 89 inch-pounds, uh, or 10 newton meters, if you will, on bolt A, which would be this little bolt down here. So I have this guy already ready to go on 89 inch pounds, just verifying it quick. So we're going to set that guy up on that. Then we have to move to B, which is 18 foot pounds, which is what I have this guy set at right now. B, I'm going to verify that. Yep. So we're starting left to right, it looks like. C is 89 inch pounds again. I'll just leave that guy on there just cause. And then 177 inch pounds on D. All right, so nine millimeter at 177. Now we got the second stage. So we start back at A again. So I'm gonna need the eight mil. And now they're all degrees of rotation. So I need to grab my other torque wrench to do that. Now the first one being 89 inch pounds and this torque wrench being not rated for such a low torque number. I'm not even gonna try and do that one as a 45 degree angle off of this torque wrench because there's just no practical way I can do that realistically. So instead 45 degrees is literally half of 90 and 90 is a is a perfect square. So I will just go ahead and do the rough demit here. I'm gonna get my ratchet in a straight up and down position and then I will go to 45 which is half of 90. So nice and simple like that. 
The next stage is asking me to take B at 75. Luckily, B is 18 foot-pounds. Now this ratchet can do that. This is a very strange torque sequence, I gotta admit. Okay, we got 75 there. Now we need 45 on C was well, another 89 inch pound. So that one being another 45, we're gonna do the same thing as I did on the last one. There we go. And finally D, which is 60 degrees. These people are crazy. They're doing some goofy crap on here. So that one at 177, that should be able to pick up on here. So I'll go ahead and set this guy to 60. So if you were to do this without one of these degree torque wrenches, it would obviously be a little tricky to do and you'd have to measure things out. To give you a perspective of the 60 degrees, I believe every 60 degrees is one of these flats on a six point bolt. So instead you'd go, this is 60, right? 120 and then that would be 180. So every one of those is 60 degrees and that's how you want to go about doing a 60 degree torque. The 45 I explained and the 75, that one's going to be a little trickier. Uh, you're either going to have to get some kind of a dial indicator unit that you can measure that with or you could just do a rough guess and you will be close if you're careful. So you know one is 60, you could go to the 60 and then just go a little past it and then call it good. Okay, so as you can see, I am tightening down all the, the bolts there, but I'm just kind of snugging them up so that they're in contact point so that everything's bottomed out. Now that everything is bottomed out, I am going to have to torque these things, and there is a little bit different torque than the typical. Normally, you would have a set torque, like for instance, 89 inch pounds, done. Ford decided to change things up a little bit. So what I have to do on the camshaft bearing cap bolts, for instance, is 53 inch pounds plus 45 degrees. So now these things are torqued above that 53 inch pounds. So what I have to do is I have to take each one individually, loosen up each cap, and I'm gonna go ahead and torque them down to the 53 inch pounds. Once I have each one at that 53 inch pounds, I'm gonna take and do the 45 degree after the fact. So I'll just go through and get all these taken care of. And then once they're torqued, I'll go ahead and start doing the front. So I have the timing assembly all in here and I have the timing marks lined up accordingly. I'm gonna go ahead and turn this thing over and just pay really close attention to how things feel. I am gonna have to replace these bolts. These are torque yield along with this balancer bolt. Obviously the balancer isn't in here, so I'm not gonna be putting the timing cover on quite yet, but I am gonna go ahead and just leave these. They're snugged up. I didn't torque them down or anything. They're just snug, just enough so that I can crank this over and see that all the timing events appear to take place in the correct time. So right now, I believe, yep, I am just about top dead center. Cylinder number one is over here, the front cylinder. So I'm gonna see where that one sits. I'm gonna look at the camshaft here. We have the exhaust cam about to open up. The intake cam is far from opening up. So this must be the ex top dead center compression stroke is what that means. I'm just doing this to tighten it down so it doesn't move while I'm turning it. Okay. So now I'm going to go ahead and throw carefully a nice long extension in here. Oop, going to need a lot more length than that. Now, if you remember, the tops of these pistons have a dimple in them and they do, they are coated. So I'm just going to very softly put this in here. It does have a very rounded end on it. And I'm only going to do this so I can have a reference for where the piston is actually sitting. And as you'll see, it'll go down with the, the deal here. I'm going to watch the exhaust valve. Okay, it just started to open the exhaust valve and I'm right before bottom dead center, I believe. So we'll see what this piston does here. Sure enough, there's bottom dead center. So that's about perfect for timing events, roughly. I mean, it's very rough and crude, obviously. Okay, we're coming up to the top. The exhaust valve is closing. Just about to close. And it's closed. And we are at top dead center. Intake valve is open. We're 
headed back down. So everything looks pretty good. Timing seems to be right on. Here comes the compression stroke. And there's the explosion again. So it appears as though we are right where we should be. Now I should be slightly off on my timing marks, but equal on each side. So we have timing mark here, timing mark here. Now our links, one link is here, one link is here. So considerably far back, and I should be able to technically count these, and it should be equally back on each individual one, including the crank one. So I'll just go ahead and do this and compare it to the crank here from, from this mark to this mark and the marks here. So after counting them, every one of those is 22. I counted them both twice, and I did have one miscount, but that was on me. Uh, so those look good. They appear to be where they need to be. I could also take the time to check the marks for these chains here, but I doubt they're going to be where they're supposed to be. But there is a couple of marks. There's dashes in the back of the cam, and both of them are lining up like this. So I'd imagine it's probably correct but there's not much, I never moved those, so those aren't gonna be a problem. And obviously the timing events that took place on the intake cam looked like that was accurate as well. So I should be set. I'm gonna try and assemble a few things. I have to wait on these bolts from the dealership and it's gonna be a few days for those, but I'm gonna try and assemble a few of these things quick and then uh, wait until I get the bolts and then finish the assembly. Now normally this is where I would tell you, you know, we're gonna replace these seals we're going to go ahead and show you how to put those on. And then we're also going to tell you, you know, replace these lines. This particular engine, it is fairly easy to remove the intake. Just because it's got such low miles, these are so clean and in such great shape, they still have some of the softness to them. I'm not worried about them hardly at all. I, in fact, I'm not worried about them at all as far as these seals go. The lines, there's a little question there. I, I mean, I know they're supposed to be, I'm pretty sure they're supposed to be replaced. And I might replace them just because I'm going to contact the dealers, get the cost. If they're cheap, I'll just do it. But typically, I would say replace them no matter what. Just because um, as far as any time you're servicing it with any miles on it. Just because of the fact that it is an item that's recommended by the dealer to replace. It's a one-time use item. This circumstance would probably be fine, like I said, because this thing has so low miles and it's so new that I don't see it being a problem. But, you know, do it at your own discretion, I guess. So I'm gonna go ahead and put the injectors in here and then do whatever else I can while I wait for my parts. So I have a bunch of components. I have the plugs for underneath in the block. I have a box full of Ford parts here. The Ford dealer brought me the parts. They actually got it really quick, so that was nice. Um, I did end up getting the fuel lines. They were like, I think 20 something for the one, the bigger one, and then just under 20 bucks for the smaller one, I believe. So not horrible. Uh, they get kind of pricey, but not horrible. So I have those, and then of course I have these cam bolts, theoretically, that looks like a balancer bolt. Wait a minute, oh, there's the cam bolts. Okay, so I have, in theory, a new balancer bolt, though that almost looks like it's not the right size. I'll have to compare that in a little bit. And then I have the phaser bolts here. So I can finally complete this motor. So that's what I'm gonna try and do. Theoretically, I can complete this motor. We'll see. So I have a bungee cord sitting here, and all that is is to hold a little tension against it. There is a a pin that that lines up the camshaft to this phaser, as well as there's a shoulder that it sits on, so it stays centered. So all I have to do, I believe, is just add a little bit of pressure to it, and it should be enough to allow me to change this thing out, change this bolt out. Oh, I just pulling it down. Oh, there it goes. It stopped. Okay, so it only went a little ways, didn't go too far. And this will allow me to change it without having to find some kind of crazy way to go about it. There's that one, now I'm gonna go ahead, do the other one. And then of course, I'm gonna start assembling the rest of it. You can see I did take and put some, put the, the knock sensors in here. I have the fuel rails in here. And then I got the rest of the parts ready and set them down below. But basically all I really did was add the knock sensors since the last 
portion of the video. I'm gonna get this thing assembled the rest of the way. As you can see, I'm already going to town at it. So when it comes to torquing the camshafts, you're supposed to torque it to 30 foot pounds, then reverse torque it, basically break it free, make it loose, and then tighten it back down again to 20 foot pounds. Then you go an additional 150 degrees. In order to do that, you're gonna need something to hold the camshaft. Now the camshaft has a very handy spot for sticking a wrench on, so that's exactly what I'm doing. I'm putting a wrench on it and then torquing it to the additional 150 degrees. Well, that was a strange and sucky hiccup. The threads rolled on my thing for holding the, the engine from rotating, so now I have to putz around with fixing that. Because torquing this, the, the engine moved and it caused it to lose my actual degree. Now it read at 57 degrees, so I'll have to remember that it was at 57 degrees and it was about seven degrees over the 50. So now I have to do an additional 100 degrees on here to get the correct torque. But before I could do that, I have to have a way to hold the engine. So I guess I'll do that and then I will keep fast forwarding, you know, without that part in the video, but I will get these taken care of as soon as I fix this. So as you can see, I had to move the stud. I actually ended up moving it over here. Uh, I was going to put it here, and then I realized that it does come really close to the baffle, and once I squish down the gasket, I think it will hit the plastic. So you can see the oil pan here. Uh, this, this is actually for the suction tube on the older model. It must come across and get bolted down somewhere in the main here. But if I were to flip this over with this one in here, it comes really close right here. So I'm afraid that once everything squishes down, it'll definitely hit that. So I had to go ahead and, you know, rearrange things a little bit. But over here, it should come land over in this area. I'll find out in a second. And you also notice I filled that with oil. That's so I can kind of prime the system. I'm gonna go ahead and prime it right before, or right after I put the oil filter on. I'm just gonna turn it over by hand, just to give it a little bit of a prime, not much. Oh, it's hitting the plastic still. Ah, that thing is annoying. All right. Now it's actually hitting right here. So it just, it does not work with this motor very well. I'm going to go ahead and take this, take it out, move it over, grab a saw, go in the other room, cut the end of it off, put it back put on it. and be done with it because that thing is in the way. Enough is enough. I, I've had it with that thing. I gotta clean off this RTV now because it's gonna dry by the time I get that done. Can't have RTV curing before I put the pan on here. <laughs> 